53-year-old male here for dull achiness in the proximal right thigh going on, going on for about three months. There was um, no major injury, but he, was, he did notice the pain after kicking the soccer ball. So something fairly acute. Uh, not too much problem with walking and um, stairs, however, could be a little troublesome for him. The look here, he does have some puffiness here, kind of in the proximal quadriceps region. I'm going to go ahead and just go and do an ultrasound of it, see what it looks like. Before we do that, we're just going to do a quick exam. Is this tender at all? This is kind of, I can feel this little, actually pretty sizable fluctuance here. Okay, bend your knee. That's body, right? Pretty good hip motion. You can see when he kind of ex extends his hip, you can see that bulge out. And bend your knee again. Push up, push up against my hand. Does that bother you? Kick up against my foot. Does that bother you? No. Harder. Okay. You can see that thing bulge out. Here we are looking at normal anatomy of a thigh. You can see the rectus femoris muscle fairly smooth and flat and blending in with the other quad muscles to form the quad tendon. Here's the lateral aspect. Now we're zooming in and rotating medially. We can see the sartorius muscle going across the thigh. And here we have this injury where the rectus femoris muscle is basically torn at the musculotendinous junction. There is some hematoma and fluid that's filling that gap, which you cannot see here in the model. But you can see proximally how the muscle is somewhat balled up and somewhat globular in appearance, secondary to being contracted from this tear. Here we are zooming in on the tear, and again, you can see how the muscle is essentially separated from the tendon, but the tendon is still preserved leading into the quad tendon. And the fact that the quad tendon is still preserved from the rectus femoris, I find quite interesting about this case. And again, here we are looking at the injury from a head-on perspective. Here's our first clip. We're actually looking at his normal side. Left side of the screen is medial. You can see the femur, vastus intermedius, and the erectus femoris right above that. Kind of normal architecture there. The muscle, you can see the central tendon form in the erectus femoris. And here you can see that central tendon form in the erectus femoris muscle, and the layers are pretty nicely delineated. Quad tendon. And here you can start seeing the layers of the quad tendon, the top two layers. The bottom layer is made of the vastus intermedius, which you can't quite see yet. Now I'm going to go to this affected side. And here you can see a bold up rectus femoris muscle. There is some fatty atrophy, which is apparent on the MRI that we're scrolling through. And also you can appreciate a rim of fluid that's around the muscle, consistent with a tear slash hematoma, and that fluid is collecting distally. See how compressible it is with pro pressure. So it forms like a, like a layer of fluid, basically, between the vastus intermedius and the rectus femoris. I should do something that kind of makes it bulge out, like bend your knee and lift it up. Got motion here. So again, you can see this bold up rectus femoris, which is really highlighted or accentuated with flexion of the hip. Back down. Let's look at this thing in long axis. Here's this kind of very... Here's that distal part of it, which is kind of dark and has some fluid in it. And again, you can see the fluid that's collecting distally and the bold up muscle that's just proximal to that fluid. And also you can still see a quadriceps tendon, the rectus femoris is still contributing to the quad tendon, which is quite interesting about this injury. The left side of the screen is also proximal, we're at 1401, you can just compare the difference here. And here's his normal side, you can just see the nice feathery texture of the muscles, the nice layering. 